merciful, all loving, shown of God. We need a word from you today. We need a word that heals. We need a word that strengthens. We need a word that saves. We need a word that comforts. We need a word that renews. We need a word that restores. We just need a word. So God, in your mercy, let Rachel decrease so that you can increase. Lord, in your mercy, open our hearts and our minds and our souls to receive the life-affirming, resurrecting word that will breathe life. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you could do me a solid, if you could open your Bibles back up to Acts chapter 2, um, I am going to read verses 1 through 5 verse 11, and then I'm going to read verse 14 through 21. In other words, I'm just going to move all over Acts chapter 2, So, and I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Y'all ready? Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Listen for the word of God. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages spoken by the believers. Verse 11, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, and we all hear the people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. Verse 14, then Peter stepped forward and the 11 other apostles, with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is, too, is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will call wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. The message for us today is simply this. We need a move. We need a move. So um, full disclosure, Tasha Cobbs Leonard has a song out, came out a few years ago called This Is A Move. And in her song, she talks about what happens when the move of God impacts the people of God. She, she, she says that mountains are still being moved. Giants are still being slain. 
but we need a move. And, 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 and her song was on my mind all week preparing for the day of Pentecost because as I looked at the story of what happened on the day of Pentecost, all I could say is this has got to be a move because I don't know about y'all. I don't know how y'all 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 broke down the text, but the way I break down the text is God takes a harvest festival. God takes a Thanksgiving holiday, y'all, and he changes it and he remakes it and he repurposes it. But he doesn't just take a holiday. He takes a group of people who have dedicated themselves to living for God who are hiding in an upper room because they scared. But even though they're scared, they decided to all come together. Because he told them to. He told them that if they would come together and if they would wait in Jerusalem, that he would share something with them that would change everything. If they came together and they worshiped together and, and they cried out together and they lamented together and they said, God, I don't know what we're supposed to do now, but we're going to do whatever we do here in this place and we're going to wait until you move. And God chose the day of Pentecost. God chose the very day that God said that the Jewish people should remember God blessing and protecting and covering and nourishing and uplifting them. He chose the day of Pentecost, y'all to pour out his spirit in a way that God had never done before. Uh, before the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on people, it was a temporary pouring out. It was something that was gifted to them so that they would have strength, so that they would have power for a moment, so they would have strength, so they would have power, so they would be able to do things they had never done before, but not for forever. Just for a moment. Kind of like in that numbers text I, I read, Earlier um, in the Numbers text, God wanted the leaders of Jerusalem, well, at that point, it's just the Jewish nation, um, to be able to do something they hadn't done before. He wanted them to be able to have a piece of the power of God that he had put on Moses so that they could lead well. And Moses chose 70 of them and brought them into the tent of meeting, but there were actually 72. So only the 70 that he chose went into the tent of meeting and the other two stayed at home. But when the power of the Holy Ghost came, landed on Moses, and moved from Moses onto the 70, it somehow reached past the tent of meeting to the other two. And at the move of God, all 72 began to prophesy. All 72 began to share messages about God's glory and God's power and God's love and God's strength and God's healing. But it only lasted that day. They experienced the move of God for a particular purpose. And, um, and every other time that the Holy Spirit was gifted and poured out, it was like that. It was to anoint a priest. It was to anoint a king. It was to anoint a leader. It was to show that God was with somebody for a particular time and for a particular task. 
but it was never something that allowed the people of God to feel the presence of God's spirit in the good times and the bad times and the in-between times. It was never something that changed the dynamic of how we interacted with God and each other. That didn't happen until the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, God did this really weird thing. Seriously, y'all, we live in Kansas. When the wind is violent, that ain't a good thing. When the wind is violent, trees fall. When the wind is violent, there is damage. When the wind is violent, when the wind rushes, the rushing of the wind doesn't bless your soul. The rushing of the wind doesn't give new life. The rushing of the wind doesn't show you that God is present to save. But on the day of Pentecost, when the wind blew, the spirit of God showed up and showed out. And instead of destruction, there was construction. Because the rushing mighty wind blew and something like tongues of fire fell. And when the wind and the fire got together, normally when wind and fire get together, one of them conquers the other. But when the wind and the fire got together this time, when the wind and the fire got together this time, they fell on the 120 disciples assembled in that upper room and a change began to happen. Every last one of them, the men and the women, the apostles and the deacons, the mamas and the daddies, the children, the teenagers, everybody in that room began to speak words of power, began to speak words of love, began to speak words of joy, and they spoke in a way that reached beyond the room and touched and tickled the ears and tickled the hearts and tickled the minds of folk who were in Jerusalem that day. Wait a minute, it was like this. Folk who had never learned French could say the Lord is high and mighty. He will fight your battles. God has not forgotten you. They ain't never spoke French. They weren't actually speaking French, but the folk who spoke French outside that upper room heard it in French. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It was like, it was like the folk in the upper room just started saying what you know about Jesus. He's all right. What you know about Jesus. He's all right. He'll make your life brand new. He'll do everything he told you he would do. And they were just saying it in Aramaic, but the folk outside the building heard it in Arabic. The folk outside the building heard it in emoji. The folk outside the building heard it in whatever language my 10 year old speaks cause, cause she don't speak English. Um, she, she, she starts saying stuff and then she shows me pictures and I'm like, I don't know what this means. Is there a universal translator for the adults in the room? Right. What I like about what God does, what I like about the way that God moves on that day, God moves in a way that gets people's attention. God moves in a way that says nobody gets left behind. God moves in a way that says whatever language you speak, what dialect you speak, whatever you need to hear to know that I am God and I am for you and I will 
will do exceedingly abundantly more than you can think or ask. Whatever you need to know that you can be part of God's resurrecting power. Whatever you need to know that God doesn't just want to heal some folk. God wants to heal you. Whatever you need to know that God's love can take you over, can take you around, and that God takes all covers. God began to move in the room and the folk in the room began to prophesy. The folk in the room began to do something they had never done before. And it changed, not just the atmosphere in the room, it changed, not just the atmosphere in Jerusalem, it changed, not just the atmosphere in Judea, it changed, not just the atmosphere in the Roman Empire, it changed, not just that day of Pentecost, but it changed you and it changed me. It meant that we had the capacity to experience God in ways we had never experienced God before. It meant that the spirit of God would dwell among us and would hang out with us. It meant that the spirit of God wouldn't just be with us temporarily, but if we would let God in, if we would let the wind blow, if we would let the fire fall, and if we would respond, by sharing the goodness of God with all comers. It would change everything. That's why we need a move. We need God to do for us and through us what God did for them. The question is, what triggered that? Was it because they were all together in one place? I, I used to think that was it. Was it because they were obedient to God? I used to think that was it. But we get victory, we get deliverance, we receive the gifting of the Holy Spirit, not by our might, not by our power, but by the move of God. In other words, you can't study the Bible enough. You can't pray enough. You can't show up at enough Sunday schools, Bible studies, worship services, community events to strong arm God into sharing God's spirit with you. The truth is God moves when the timing's right. The truth is, God moves when we need a move. And if we need a move and God then moves, then we have also got to move. Because the truth is, God ain't stopped moving since the day of Pentecost. The truth is, it's not that the Holy Spirit doesn't move. The truth is, it's not that the mighty wind of God doesn't blow. The truth is, is that the fire of God still falls down and burns away all that stuff that keeps us from connecting to God and each other. God still moves. The difference is we don't just, we just don't recognize that God is moving.
You remember that time when you wanted to take a particular route to get to a particular place and something told you that you needed to take another world? Yes. That was the move of God. You, you, you remember that time when you picked up the phone and you dialed that one person that you ain't talked to in a while and you talked to him and then you hung up the phone and you weren't sure why you talked to him, but you found out five years later that that was the day that they were at the end of their rope and they were ready to give out and give up on life, on God and everything else. That was a move. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember that time when you weren't the one who made the call? Remember that time when you weren't the one who knocked on the door? Remember that time when you weren't the one who sent the email? Remember that time when you weren't the one who made the letter arrive just on time? Remember that time when the song hit the radio that ministered to your spirit? Remember that time when somebody spoke life and hope and healing into your spirit. Remember that time? That was a move of God. So even though we need a move, even more than needing a move, we need to move when the spirit moves, when the wind blows, when the fire falls, when God speaks to our hearts and our minds and we just can't hold it in, we need to move. Because when God moves and the people of God move in sync with God, lives are changed, people are healed, Folk discover that there is a better way and a better life. And yeah, some folk will misinterpret what's happening. Some folk will say, them crazy church people doing that crazy church stuff once more and again. So if the world is better because we move when God moves, who cares what they say? If somebody in our life chooses life because God moves and we move with God and we speak life into their life, who cares how other people misinterpret it? As a matter of fact, perhaps their misinterpretation will be an invitation for us to move with God once more and again and tell them what really happened. I'm just saying, on that first day of Pentecost, God moved in a way that changed everything. On that first day of Pentecost, God moved in a way that birthed a church where there was no church. God moved in a way that brought people together who had never been together in that way before. And if God is still moving, if God is still breathing, if the fire is still falling, and if people are still being changed, then we ought to move too. Because when God moves and we move in sync with God, the world is never the same. I'm ready to move, are you? I'm ready to move, are you? I'm ready to give hate an uppercut. I'm ready to take a knockout punch to all the isms that try and break us and mess with our minds and our spirits. I'm ready. Are you ready? Well, since we need a move, let's be the move that the world needs. This is 
the word of God, for the people of God, all praise and thanks be to God.